The topic tonight is, does the geologic column exist? I believe that's that's the topic of it. So, um, or in other words, is the secular explanation for the geo geologic column valid? That's the actual topic for tonight. So I'm affirming, I'm affirming the positive claim and I will be using evidence, scientific evidence to do that. So Kent is denying the positive claim, not affirming a different position. It's really crucial tonight that understand that this debate is one topic, not two topics. Uh, that is how debates are supposed to go. So I will just be sticking, or I'll be doing my best anyways, to just stick with the secular account as I laid out before. Um, the other reason to do that is because um, a claim that has no evidence, especially in a scientific debate, which I'm pretty sure that's what this is supposed to be, uh, is really not a claim that deserves any talking time. A post hoc evidence is really no evidence at all. It's just a circular argument. So for it, I, I know Kent believes in the flood and he thinks the geologic layers and fossils or whatever were deposited by the flood, but there's no evidence to support that. And the reason I know that is because Kent said it himself. I don't know that all the fish died at the same time in the flood. This would be, it's an awfully big world we live on. Uh, I just, I don't understand. Let me get to my side here. I believe during the flood, parts of the world may be underwater for a few weeks and then above water for a few weeks and then back underwater for a few weeks. I don't know. I'll watch the video when I get to heaven and see what happened. You don't understand what the flood could do to the fossils. Okay. I don't understand it all either. Well, but I'm, I'm not demanding that my view be taught. I don't understand. Okay. The Bible says the insects and plants were all made in one week. Not a problem. I, and I believe that. I don't, I don't, I couldn't, don't, can't prove that scientifically. What did we hear in there? I don't know. I'll see the video when I die. So there is zero justification for this alternative explanation, which again is not the topic. The topic is not, did the flood do this? It's, is the secular account true? I don't understand it. I'm not demanding that my view be taught. So according to Kent, what I hear is he can't even advocate for his view. Uh, he doesn't think it's a fact. He just believes it. And this thing about, uh, you know, I believe it, but I can't prove it scientifically. So we are here to discuss science. That's what I've been led to believe. Kent firmly believes that his claim is outside of science. The flood is not a valid topic for today. Kent's job tonight is to find contradictions uh, in the model that are that is overwhelmingly agreed upon by real scientists because that's the model being affirmed in tonight's debate, the geologic column. Um, the final thing I want to say here is just kind of a prediction. Kent will likely refer to the scientific model as a religion, and he does that to delegitimize the position. This is a little bit weird, um, and it's only acceptable if Kent can provide a scientific or at least a secular rebuttal to the position that I take. But I don't think that's going to happen because we've already heard Kent say that he can't prove those things scientifically, and he'll only actually know after he dies. So with this thing about calling the secular scientific model a religion, Kent either needs to find contradictions in it, disprove it in some way using scientific evidence or secular evidence, or just admit that his position is not legitimate either. So that is my opening statement. Well, thank you. I didn't see anything uh, in his opening statement to show what his position is. Uh, the position that the atheists and the evolutionists take is that the layers of the earth are different ages. Does the geologic column exist? This is typical from textbook. I'm surrounded by hundreds of thousands, maybe hundreds of textbooks here. They show that they, their belief is that the layers of the earth are different ages. I think my job tonight is to rebut that. It is not possible that those layers be different ages. They say the uh, Archean era is 2.5 billion years old down at the bottom. And the Holocene is only 10,000 years old. Where was all the Holocene dirt sitting for 2.4999 billion years? It is not possible that the layers be different ages. Every speck of dirt on the planet is the same age. Whether it's 6,000 or 6 trillion doesn't matter. It's all the same age. Are these layers being added from outer space? Is the Earth like a big 
uh, apple on a stick where they keep dipping it and they get new layers of chocolate over it every time. No, there is no new material, little comets and dust once in a while, but nothing significant. Where is the new material coming from? My, my position is the, the geologic column that he believes in doesn't exist anywhere in the world. It's all been made up. I got stuff on that here. Geologic column does not exist. One of the biggest lies in world history, they believe the layers are different ages. You want some scientific evidence? Well, let me see here. Let's go to uh, polystrata fossils that are found all over the world, petrified trees that are standing up, connecting the layers. I can tell you trees only stand up a few years after they die. We had 70 some died this year on our property in Lenox, Alabama, because of uh, the bark beetles. They're gonna only stand there for maybe two years and they'll fall over. So if their layers are different ages, they're not different by more than a couple hours. I believe every tide going up and down, tidal pumping it's called, would make the water rush in and out of the tidal pump. That happens today. And if the, uh, during Noah's flood, it would be a much higher tidal bump. So the water would rush back and forth at the same speed of the earth is turning at your latitude. Here in Lenox, it's 300, or 866 miles an hour. So these polystrata fossils are clear evidence that the layers are not vastly different in age. They're found thousands of them all over the world. There's a big one in Yellowstone. They finally put a, finally put a fence around it because people were going in breaking pieces off to have a piece of petrified wood. Petrified trees in the standing position are quite common. The evolutionists, I've never heard a good explanation for that. They claim the layers are different ages. It's their job to support that claim. I'm saying that's not possible. A friend of mine is a manager of a, a, a big wigs at a coal mine. There he is right there, Donald Mac, Don McDonald. You can call him if you'd like. He said in the coal mine where they dig there near Birmingham, Alabama, they find petrified trees standing up all the time, running through the seams of coal. They'll come right through from one layer of rock, right through a seam of coal, right into the next layer of rock. Same tree. The evolutionist explanation is that that coal is from a forest that got buried in a local flood, never, never a worldwide flood. And yet we have petrified trees standing up, running through these layers. I'm sorry, all of the layers were deposited very rapidly I'd say in one year during Noah's flood, just mainly by tidal pumping up and down. You get that phenomena in addition to the fact that the earth is tilted over and the moon is 10 degrees off center from our equator. So the tide changes as the earth, uh, you know, the se seasonal changes, even in the tide. So uh, the coal mine in uh, uh, Alabama, North Alabama, he said, look, we dig up trees all the time. He's got them labeled here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Tree number H, letter H, runs through the Mary Lee seam of coal. Letter A runs through the Blue Creek seam of coal, but they also simultaneously run through the same center layers. How, how can this be? Those layers, two layers of coal, complete layers of coal formed and before either of those trees could rot. The geologic column does not exist. It, it's a fiction, it's made up. Petrified tree, hundreds of feet, uh, found hundreds of them in Kettle Mine in Cookfield, Tennessee. The bottom is running through one seam of coal, the top's running through a different seam of coal. Why are coal layers always in vertical, nice neat layers, like on, and right on top of rock? If the coal is really from a, a forest that you know got buried in uh, some kind of flood, Where's the root system? Isn't rock a pretty poor uh, strata to grow, grow trees on? So up in Joggins, Nova Scotia, there are hundreds and hundreds of petrified trees, maybe even thousands, standing up, running through multiple layers. So Eric's job tonight is to prove that the geologic column is legitimate and it does exist. And the current scientific model, they call it the law of superposition. That's not a law at all. That is stupid. Whoever made that up needs to go back to school. There's no law of superposition. They say the top layer has to be younger than the one under it. No, no, no. The layers form sideways. Can you play that video, Donnie? We got time to a five minute clip. Second. This was done years ago, University of Colorado. Larger particles to deposit on the previous laminate. Notice multiple layers forming simultaneously. Coarser particles not contacting the laterally forming stratum continue to be transported by the current. <clears throat> An increase in the current velocity again due to friction, caused laminae similar to the previous ones to form on top of the stratum of large particles. The accumulation of sediment between two instants of time, T1 and T2, produced a deposit. The deposit consisted of a part of the lower laminae, part of the stratum of large particles, 
and part of the upper laminae. Each subsequent individual deposit from upstream to downstream was therefore younger than the one before it. If it were possible to differentiate these successive lateral deposits, the time needed for a strata to form could be calculated by adding the difference of time between T1 and T2 to the difference between T2 and T3 and so on. Due to the presence of a current, strata were formed vertically and laterally at the same time yeah, in the direction right there. of the current. Done. The well, this is the whole, this is the whole point. The layers do not form vertically, they form horizontally, multiple layers at the same time. So this whole geologic column that his whole religion is built on is not science. It doesn't hold up to scientific scrutiny. Petrified trees that are standing up, put mine back up there, but petrified trees that are standing up are clear evidence of the layers forming rapidly. This is experimental, obvious, observable scientific fact, the layers are not different ages, not by millions of years. But you guys are going to go ahead and believe in that because that's your Bible. You really trust on this idea that the layers form vertically. The law of superposition is not a law. It's not even common sense. And experiments show that. When the water is moving horizontally, like you would get all the time in a big flood, water running into the tidal bump, water running out of the tidal bump, we get that now every six hours, 12 and a half minutes. That vertical, that horizontal movement of the trillions of tons of water is what makes all the layers very rapidly. So if you see a petrified tree standing up, running through many layers, I think that's pretty clear evidence. It's not common sense to say the layers form slowly over millions of years. Each layer is a different tide, six hours, 12 and a half minutes apart. And we have the, it's observable. So the question tonight, does the geologic column exist? Well, the Earth has many layers. That's not the question. The question is, are the layers millions of years different in age? The answer is no. Here's a fish fossil that was found with his nose stuck in rock, fossilized, a million years older than the rest of his body, according to the time scale of evolutionists. I'm just pointing out there is no observable evidence to show that the layers form vertically and the top layer is younger. That is simply not correct. But that's what they choose to believe. And I think that's just not common sense. So uh, yield my time. <clears throat> Kent, you you said that, so these are polystrate fossils, right? Hor horizontal right. layers cutting through the, the tree trunks are, right. That video you showed us that was recorded with a toaster said, and you said that layers form vertically, not horizontally. That video showed the layers going like this. Right? No. Yes, it, it did. That that, that video you me. showed, the layers were going this way, and then the guy Wait, said, wait. "This is the way they form, and they form laterally, not horizontally." And you said but that you're, multiple you're times. Starting with, a, starting with a false premise, okay? He showed clearly that three layers were forming at the same time, and the bottom layer slightly ahead of the one above it. If you had three layers forming at the same time, it is very possible to have a fossil at the bottom that's younger and newer than a fossil at the top because it just now you got to go right and left to be able to determine and you don't know which way the tide was going watch the whole video experiments and stratification done 40 or 50 years ago at the university of colorado okay. he demonstrated yeah. sometimes they form seven or eight layers that, at the that, same time that's, that's fine let me let me cut in here okay. um you said multiple times the layers form laterally not horizontally correct that completely contradicts the idea of these polystrate fossils then, Kent, because these oh, layers yeah. formed horizontally, not laterally. And you show us okay. pictures of trees floating in Spirit Lake upright as if to suggest that they sink down into the sediment and that's how they get filled and that's how there are, are, are all of these layers surrounding the trees. But you're telling us that the layers form laterally. You just... Correct. You, you did a better job of debunking yourself than I ever could have. Well, then you are completely not understanding the common English here. If a tree is standing still, a large tree is standing up, layers form around it. But according layers. to your video, they form laterally. These right. layers are this, formed horizontally. The layers are now horizontal uh, on top of each other, turned to rock. But when they formed, the tide was moving back and forth, forming each layer. A tree could stand there for six months while layers form around it, 
but it can't stand there for millions of years. Do you believe these that's layers not, That's are not the question. The question is, in what sequence are the layers put down and what orientation? I don't want to waste too much time on this because I, I didn't prepare this. Um, I just heard you say it. But everybody, you can go back and show that his video is showing that layers are deposited laterally, which is completely different than his claim about how these polystrate fossils are formed. So I think that that just is an odd, odd contradiction. Sorry, I've got to no, reshare my screen time? here. Is this discussion time? Do I get to respond to these, Donnie? Yeah, let's do yeah. that. Let's, yeah. uh, Ken, okay. uh, if, uh, if, feel free to respond to his point there. If a tree is stuck standing up, which most of them are in the world, and the water is rushing sideways, it may form three or four layers, and it may bury another tree downstream 10 feet later than that or earlier than that. If the layers form this way, when they dry out, they end up this way, stacked up like a deck of cards. But if you shuffle a deck of cards, the top card isn't younger. All the layers, every speck of dirt's the same this age. This is not my question. Okay. The, what he showed there, suppose in that experiment that he showed with the layers forming sideways, suppose there'd been something stuck in the bottom of the tank sticking straight up. It would end up with layers, horizontal layers, that form vertically. How can you not get this? So, like I said, I don't want to really spend time going over this. I, I don't want to waste because I didn't prepare for this. But everybody can go back and watch this later. He's telling us that they form laterally, but they need to form horizontally for these polystrate fossils because he's telling us that the tree is sitting vertically. So, anyways, it's not super important. There was one other thing you said, though, that I thought was incredible. Um, you said that, uh, well, are you made of atoms, Kent? I am. Far um, as I know nobody's ever actually seen an atom, but yeah, that's the current the current theory. True, but we have scientific models uh, for them. Oh, we have a we have a model, and it's got to be true. Yeah, okay. Are the uh, the atoms yeah. that made you way, up? Did they exist in the universe before you were born? Yes, they did. Okay, and you think the universe is six thousand years old? Correct. Are you six thousand years old? No, the material for the whole Earth is six thousand years old. Are you six thousand years old though? No, no, it's been rearranging itself all along. So People die if, and get recycled. if matter rearranges itself, then rearrangements of that matter can be different ages than the overall age of the material. See, in Ken's opening statement, he wanted to tell you that all the rocks and atoms on Earth have to be billions of years old, therefore we can't even date anything. That's obviously false. So I just wanted to get that out. Okay. Well, before, before you slap and run, okay, it's true Every speck of dirt's the same age. Are you saying these layers of rock in the geologic, imaginary geologic column, the top one is younger because it was placed there later? Does moving it to a new location change the age of it? Write that, the write, write that down for your cross-examination. I'm asking questions right now. I'm not trying to answer them. Uh, we the, can't answer it, questions it, with questions, though. You are claiming the Holocene layer on top is younger than the Cambrian layer at the bottom. I'm trying to figure out how you could come to that conclusion when all the layers of dirt are the same age. There is no geologic column. That's they're, why I started off not. my thing. <laughs> they're not. We'll go over they, We'll go they, over how to date them. They have to be. Okay, go ahead. Um, so introduction first, um, science in action. So the way science works is we begin with a hypothesis, such as I think John stole the cookies from the cookie jar. Then you collect evidence, and we have some pretty damning evidence on Johnny here. Now, there's zero evidence that Sally did it. So, are there any conclusions we can make from this? Kent, what would you conclude? Oh, I'd give Johnny a chance to testify. Maybe do a lie detector test. We're not in court here, Eric. Sure, so but if Johnny lies, the evidence will uh, reveal that Johnny is lying. He might have got cookies from somewhere else. There's lots of other options besides he stole them from that cookie jar, your honor. Sure. So if something happened in the past, there may be predictable evidence that supports a claim. Evidence can get destroyed. That is the cruel reality of time. But in any case, what you need to make sure you do is state your claim before you find evidence. If somebody thinks Sally did it, but they have no evidence, then their claim is not supported. And their claim remains unsupported until they find new evidence or discover a contradiction. The claim that Sally could have framed John isn't evidence, 
and it's not equal to the alternative. I bring that up because of what I discussed in my opening statement. So, okay, well, hold it. You don't think Sally could wash her hands and get the crumbs off and still be guilty? Uh, yeah, but there's no evidence that Sally did it. There is evidence well, that Johnny did it. There's evidence Johnny has crumbs on his hands. That's all. It's not evidence that he stole the cookies. Uh, but if he the stole the Kent, if Johnny what? stole the cookies, then that is evidence that would uh, that would uh, count against or toward Johnny. So, anyways, we're not here to debate cookies, but I just I, I'm outlining wondering how, how you got to works. that from geologic column. Okay. Uh, it's just to outline how science works and how you actually need evidence if you're going to argue against a claim. So I showed you evidence. I showed you evidence. Petrified trees standing up show clearly the layers are not millions of years different in age. That's However, not how you form. tell how old something is. Anyways, so here's a scientific hypothesis. A fish with rudimentary limbs, uh, a shoulder, neck, all these features should be found in strata that has consistently been dated to a certain age and is of a certain type. That was a hypothesis evolution, but the fossil record goes along with geology and the geologic column because an ancient earth would posit that life has undergone changes on that earth. Well, lo and behold, some scientists, uh, Neil Shubin in particular and some others, knew of a place they could go knew of a rock strata that they could go study that had been dated to a specific age. They found all kinds of fossils in there. None of them were land-dwelling vertebrates, and they found exactly the kind of thing they were looking for, the Tiktaalik fossil, which, if you study its anatomy, you can see it has all of those transitionary-type traits that you would expect the ancestor of land-dwelling vertebrates to have. Of evolution, uh, Darwin actually called it descent with modification, and we can see that kind of thing happening here. So, multiple specimens were found where they thought they would be found. It has the traits that you would expect it to have. The strata contains no terrestrial vertebrates. So, Kent, where's the contradiction in this? First of all, I think I heard the number recently that 99% of all fossils that are found are not terrestrial. Only 1% of all the fossils, it was just in something last week somebody sent me, uh, they're saying nearly all the fossils are sea-dwelling creatures, 99, the high 90s percentile. So the fact that you find tectolics in the same layer might prove they have the same body density. It might prove they all drowned at the same time. I, I didn't ask what might be an alternative explanation. I asked where's the contradiction? The contradiction to what? They found they found tectonic fossils. They found exactly the what they thought they would find where they expected to find it. So where's when the contradiction? A, when they drilled a well on our property, they thought if they drilled down, they would find water, and they found it. That's proof it's billions of years old. So you can't find a contradiction. I don't understand how this ties into anything that we're supposed to be covering tonight. So if I said the, the fact that the layers of the earth probably, I think they formed in one big flood, and you may find all the animals of a similar body density would drown at the same time. I bet you'll find clams are fem generally found at the bottom because clams already live at the bottom. That's be the first one buried, not because they evolved first. I would predict you would find birds generally in the top layers. Because birds have hollow feathers and hollow bones, they float, and they're the last ones to die in a flood. That's not it a prediction. Not we already knew those things. That's why they're found on top. That's not a prediction. Okay, and I aren't predict clams famously found on top of Mount Everest? Well, Mount Everest, that, we don't know that the top Mount Everest now has always been the highest point in the world. There's this again. So, the, so these aren't predictions, predictions, audience. These are, we already knew that birds are on top of the clam appear after the clam fossils and Ken saying that he predicted that's what we should find, which is wait, not wait, the wait. case. You said birds appear after. So you're saying the birds evolved. Uh, they, were there no birds around when clams were around? That's correct. There's birds and clams alive today. Go to the beach. Birds the appeared after clams. No, I'm telling you, listen, if you go didn't to say the they beach, never coexisted, you will, find, you will find clams existing today and birds existing today. Yeah. Duh. Why clams it, evolved first. That? No. Do you think it could have been that 50 years ago? Do you think clams and birds lived at the same time 50 years ago or 500 years ago, 10,000 years ago, 2 billion years ago? 
No, not Your two Honor, billion years ago. claim is so, silly. You, Kent was unable to find a contradiction, but <laughs> we'll see if he can find... Well, you didn't. The scientific, the hypothesis was this is what we should find, where we should find it. We did. And you can't poke any holes in it. You started talking about birds and clams. So I'll do you a favor and move on. Um, so oh, oil, com yeah. oil companies do, um, they have a similar kind of hypothesis. Oil deposits should be found in strata that's been consistently dated to this age and of this type. Using that assumption, they have more than quintupled the amount of known oil deposits just in the last 60 years. I think I have a, I have a picture of this uh, right here. So these are just like known oil deposits. Hilariously enough, there actually was a group that tried to do what Kent does, Zion Oil and Gas. You can read these quotes, but they say, um, there is an answer and it's found in the most overlooked source of geologic information available to mankind today, the Bible. So people using a biblical model to try to look for where oil might be uh, went broke. This doesn't work. Using the secular model is wildly successful. This company, they've lost 99.68% of their stock. So that obviously doesn't work. So oil companies use this same, these same working assumptions on earth is old and the oil should be in these layers and they find the oil in those layers. So Kent, where's the contradiction here? Well, first place, uh, oil companies go broke all the time. Okay. That's nothing to do with anything. And the fact that these guys made a prediction based on some Bible verse, I don't know the story. But the fact is, why do we have oil in the earth at all? I think the oil in the earth is clear evidence of rapid burial of lots of living material. I think almost everybody would agree oil is from organic Kent, material. I didn't Things ask for an alternative explanation. I asked, can you find holes in the secular model? Where did you go off on this wild idea of finding contradictions? Where is the evidence? Because that's how you would prove it's false. We're not here. We're well, not here to debate. Did the flood happen? The topic of the debate is: Does the geologic column exist? You think it doesn't, which means you need to right. prove that there is errors. That there are errors in the science that has okay. built up the geologic column concept. In the last 40 minutes, you have several times said this layer has been dated. This layer has been dated. They found this where the age it was supposed to be, stuff like that. Here's from American journalist Science. The intelligent layman has long suspected circular reasoning in the use of rocks to date fossils and fossils to date rocks. The geologist has never bothered to think of a good reply. Feeling the explanations are not worth the trouble as long as the work brings results. They're arguing in a circle. The age of the rocks is determined by the organisms it contains. The age of the fossils are determined by the rock layers. They date the rocks by the layers and the layers by the rocks. This is the clear contradiction in all of you said tonight. You're starting with the assumption that your stupid That's geologic column is true. It is. No, it's okay. not. I, claiming, that, claiming that the logic is fallacious is not proof that there's a contradiction. Because okay. here's the thing about logical you know, fallacies. People think that if you commit a logical fallacy, you are wrong. That's not how it works. It's just it's just bad logic. But okay. go on. Would you agree that the in your geologic column that you're supposed to be supporting tonight, they have... Save I'm this sure for your cross-examination. You're not asking me questions right now. Here they have trilobites at the bottom in the Cambrian and Ordovician era. Trilobites. This is... How do you know... If you find Kent, you have to save this for your cross examination. I'm not trying to be rude. Yeah, guys, let's get back. So, um, let, let's consider that a response from Kent, and then that's Eric fine. either respond to that or follow up with a question. Go ahead. Um, I, I, I have my response data in a different place in here, so I will answer that specific question, Kent. No worries. Um, I've, when, I got your slide back up, Eric. Thank you very much for that. Um, so Kent, do you have? Where should we expect to find oil deposits if they were created by a global flood that created virtually every sedimentary layer on Earth? I know he said we weren't discussing the flood, but, you know, okay. might as well throw I, it in there I a couple predict, times. I, I predict that probably 100% of the oil deposits will be found underground. <laughs> no, duh. That would be the case regardless of whether your account is correct or my account is correct. Do you have I'm evidence that would do you have evidence that would be exclusionary to your idea? 
Well, your, your idea is that oil deposits are covered by layers of sediment that are a different age. How did they become a different age to be on top of these oil deposits? Save it for your cross-examination. Do you have an answer? I, I don't understand no. okay. your, what, you're, what you're reasoning here. The I, layers, I'm proving that your model can't answer any questions and that you're just flood, doing post hoc rationalization yes. on everything. The flood model would perfectly explain all the layers forming rapidly while the animals just then recently explain died. explain where they we would buried. find oil. I told you, in the ground. I lived in East Texas. They have oil You don't understand all over that that would be true regardless of if the earth is billions of years old or thousands of years old? You're not getting it. Yes, I, I do. I answered your question. Oil is found in the ground. <laughs> so, so what's the model that predicts that oil would be found in the sky? There isn't any it, that I know of. Okay, there we go. So, so a, a non-answer. So the, the fact that oil is found in certain pockets of the world, that would be wildly spread out. Who knows? I believe the global flood would cause all kinds of animals. In the middle of the Pacific Ocean today and in the Atlantic Ocean, there are huge islands of trash. The people are dumping plastic and stuff out there, and the, the a Coriolis effect of the currents is causing all this to come together in one location, M bigger than some of, the, of our states in the United States, mountains of trash. That's because of the swirling waters of the ocean. During the flood of Noah, the same swirling waters would tend to get animals to swirl together and be buried in pockets. I don't know where they were buried. I think it's, you'd ask anybody in the oil field business, there's a whole lot of risk. You just, you don't know. You drill a hole and hope you hit it. Uh, but... They, they, if they find one, they're probably going to find more. Kilgore, Texas, the Kilgore Oil Museum, they had 28 oil wells on one acre of ground. There was so much oil down there back in 1920s, they couldn't pump it out fast enough. Probably that was where the center of one of these pockets were for all the dead animals that drowned. But in a worldwide flood, this could happen on the North Pole. It could happen anywhere. So the fact that it's found in the ground, as far as where it's found, I don't think you can do all kinds of things you can do uh, Check earthquake monitoring and, you know, do seismographs and stuff like that and try to calculate is the, is the uh, uh, movement going through oil, through liquid or through solid. There's a lot of science behind finding oil, but it has nothing to do with the geologic column. Nothing whatsoever. Okay. That is a damning non-answer, but moving on. So here's the so-called geologic column. Now, Kent doesn't believe in the geologic column, but the geologic column was described Hundreds of years ago. The names were given to it hundreds of years ago. Now, what scientists, um, paleontologists, geologists at the time recognized was the only thing they could do at that time was what's called relative dating. They put things in the order they occurred, not when they occurred. They didn't have the technology for that. Whether you believe in a flood or, or what I believe in, it still, you know, one thing happens after another. It's still a sequence. Um, so we also get from this the principle of fossil succession. Some fossils, organisms, have coexisted with other organisms, but others have never coexisted. Dinosaurs and woolly mammoths have never coexisted. Trilobites and dinosaurs never coexisted because that's what the evidence says. And then or at least that was the hypothesis after taking a look at the fossil record. Then along came technology that we could use to date, to put ages on these fossils in different places. So paleontologists noticed that fossils don't overlap. Most of them don't. They inferred that vast stretches of time where life and environments were different. All they knew is the order, not the time span. Then scientists found a way to date materials. So if those prior assumptions are false, if this geologic column and the principle of fossil succession is false, then radiometric dating would disprove it. Now, Kent might say that radiometric dating itself is false or something like that. But if that's the case, then there would be no correlation. Except that's not what happened. All of the dates are consistent with what that was assumed in the relative sequence of them. No trilobite fossil has ever been dated to be younger than dinosaur fossils or of the same age and so on with all the other claims. So Kent, where's the contradiction? Well, if how many fossils supposedly dated by your geologic column have turned out to be still alive 
Is the Tiktaalik or something similar to that still alive? Is the Loch Ness Monster still alive? Are we going there? You're missing the, you're avoiding the question, sir. No, I'm not. Is the tic, are there, are there lobe fin fish that are still alive today? There are coelacanths, yeah. The coelacanths in the fossil record are okay. completely different species of coelacanth. Okay. So there are lobe fin fish in your imaginary fossil record, and there are lobe fin fish alive today. Are there mammoths in the imaginary fossil record? Yes. Could it be that they were just hunted to extinction in the last thousand years? There's sure a lot of evidence of carvings and stuff on cave paintings where people saw them alive. They didn't dig up the tusk and make a woolly mammoth out of a tusk. There's, there's, there's evidence that man has lived with mammoths. So yeah, I know the that. evidence is, the, your, the contradiction is clear. You're starting with the assumption your geologic column is true. That's not a contradiction. <laughs> It's an How is it a contradiction to make an assumption? You can't do science without a hypothesis, which is an okay. assumption. I have a hypothesis that the flood made all these layers in one year. You have no You evidence. have a hypothesis that the layers are different ages. And I'm asking you, if they're different ages, where are they coming from? Are they coming from outer space? It's not your, this is not, you're not cross-examining me, Kent. So where's the, the contradiction? It's not your nobody turn to ask here. questions. I don't know how you don't get that. I'm going to answer all your questions. Okay, guys, let's, hey, let's, I just want to make sure we're sticking to the format. Yeah. Note that question it's, down and we'll get to it in your 25 minute period, Kat. And okay. Eric, I just want to double check how much time you have left just so we're probably not much. Smoothly. You've got about two minutes left. So Kent, these are scientific claims. Um, Coal forms from the Carboniferous. Oh, sorry, I have to go backwards a little bit. Um, so we have, if we look at a Spirit Lake, this is one of Kent's favorite places to uh, to argue for like this flood stuff. What you see here are trees, and when you zoom in, there are, uh, I mean, this is hundreds of trees in a small area, and you zoom out, and then there's tens of thousands. You zoom way out, and there's maybe millions of trees in there. Um, when the eruption happened, it blasted trees away and the blast also extended up the opposite mountainside and then water and pyroclastic flow and all this other stuff ripped all the topsoil and left it bare like you can see here. And then all that stuff ended up in Spirit Lake. There was so much sediment in Spirit Lake that the lake rose up. It was either 90 feet or 90 meters. I don't remember off the top of my head. So... We have hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of trees. We have billions of tons of sediment. We have lots and lots of water. And we have far more than enough time, according to Kent, to form coal. Because Kent thinks coal was formed during a flood that only lasted a year. Um, yet there is no coal at all that's ever been found in that area. So clearly the requirements for producing coal are not as simple as a lot of chunks a lot of trees, a lot of sediment, and a lot of water. The conditions are more rare than that. If we just look at the numbers, we used like 8.5 billion tons of coal in 2023. Um, and other studies have looked at the biosphere to see how much, like, uh, how much biomass there is. So we have around 450 billion tons of carbon in the plant biosphere. So if every single plant on Earth today turned into coal, we'd have less than 100 years worth of this stuff. Now, is coal becoming scarce? No. Um, there are over a trillion tons of proven reserves of coal. We find more of this stuff every year. So anyways, um, these are the scientific assumptions um, that, that date way back. Most coal comes from the Carboniferous period. That's why it was called that back in the 1800s. And coal forms under rare conditions. The coal collected for a period of ten, many tens of millions of years. So the coal in Earth should represent prolonged accumulation, not sudden accumulation. And there's well over twice the amount of known coal, but we find more every year, as the Earth could make if every single plant turned into coal. But we know that even if there was a global flood, that wouldn't have happened. So in reality, there's thousands or tens of thousands of times more. Where's the issue in the secular model here for coal? Well, the issue is really obvious. Okay, first place, the trees, as you showed on Spirit Lake, are floating on top of the water. 
They've done lab experiments where they make coal in 20 minutes if you bury it and put it under pressure. If those trees on Spirit Lake, see logs float, Eric, when they're when they're in the water, okay? But during Noah's flood, you would get multiple layers. And if you had 5,000 feet of mud on top of those logs, they would turn to coal quickly. The other great flaw in your model <laughs> is you're looking at today's world, which is 70% underwater and, and much 10% desert and 10% ice cap, okay? There's a relatively small amount of area for trees to even grow. 70% of the earth is underwater. Suppose the world was at one time 90% land and not, did not have giant ice caps or giant desert. Suppose it was created perfectly to support life all over the place. Then you could get all the coal we find in the world in one flood. So your argument that today's False. model of the earth, which only has 20, probably let's pick a number and say 10% of the earth is able to even grow trees. Sure, it's a lot of lot, a lot of forest. We got. I live in a gravel pit here. We got thousands of trees here. It's pine trees. This is a, a tree area where they raise them for, for, for paper mills. But the, you're looking at today's world and saying that's how it's always been. What if the Earth was 90 percent land and 10 percent water at one time? I think there's overwhelming evidence. The fact that we find a lot of coal in the ground, more coal than can be produced today, is not proof that your model is correct. It certainly is proof that your model is false. You didn't even try to find issues with the secular model. You said, what if something else? You didn't even try. Okay. And then you talk about Spirit Lake, the trees are floating. What would happen if the whole earth was flooded? The trees would float. You say they would have right. been buried because there's sediment. There was the side of the mountain blew off, Kent, oh. and all of the topsoil from the area was gone billions have, of tons of sediment there. all yep. the water you need millions of trees zero coal because they're still floating on top if they were buried it's under been 500 50 or 2, years or what 40 something years and you're telling us in one year you can get coal this way whereas you where can, we have the conditions can. exactly like what you're saying are required to produce coal it produces zero coal because they're not on the bottom of the mud yet. If exactly. They, covered, they will be. And Here's a flood the wouldn't put them on Eric. the bottom of the ocean. Eric, I showed clearly the error in your model. You're assuming, just like no, predicted in 2 Peter 3, that the scoffers would be willingly ignorant of the flood. The layer, the layers of the earth forming sideways could bury the trees, bury that every tide would add a new layer. By the time you get a few hundred or a few thousand feet of mud on top, the pressure is going to turn it to coal. Google, how fast can coal form? You'll find it's been done in the laboratory in 20 minutes. <clears throat> heat, and, heat and pressure is required. The trees on top of Spirit Lake are not under any heat or pressure. Gentlemen, a, 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 is... a flood. So the, the ocean levels could not have been thousands of feet deep or anything like that. So the idea that at the surface of the earth, enough heat and pressure would have been caused by water to make coal is pretty laughable. Okay, let's do I this, not, gentlemen. I, not, I think my I time's set. Like, the mud on top. I said, listen to me. I said the 500 feet of mud on top would turn them to coal. 500 Okay, gentlemen, feet. that is our first engaging, fast-paced round of cross-exam. So that was about 30 minutes, and 30 minutes flew by, I'll say. So, uh, Kent, you now get to lead the way in cross-exam, and you get to uh, ask questions relevant to the topic. Go ahead, gentlemen. Okay, Eric, find the contradiction, uh, disprove this. This guy said, Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, it cannot be argued or denied from a strictly philosophical standpoint, geologists are arguing in a circle. The succession of organisms, you know, the fish, amphibian, reptile, mammal, has been determined by the study of remains embedded in the rocks. And the age of the rock is determined by the age of remains of the organisms. Ever since William Smith, the fossils have been and still are the best and most accurate method of correlating, uh, dating and correlating the rocks. How do you date the rock layer? If I brought you a trilobite fossil, how is this? How would this be dated? You don't date uh, the fossil directly or sedimentary rock layers. What you do is you date surrounding igneous inclusions or like sills and things like that. Igneous rocks can be dated. Sedimentary rocks cannot be directly dated, but you can get a window of time by doing the radiometric dating of igneous rocks. 
Okay, are you aware that the radiometric dating methods were all developed since World War II after 1950? The, so how did they get your geologic column in 1830? How did they t determine That's... the age of the layers 120 years before there was any radiometric dating? They didn't. They determined the order of events. Okay. Could the order of events you... be just as easily explained? The animals were probably going to be sorted by body density. Clams are going to be found at the bottom because clams have a denser body than bird feathers. Could they be sorted based upon mobility? Clams can't run very fast. Is there any other way that they could end up in a certain order? If you shake a jar of dirt and mud and sand and gravel and water, it'll always form into layers in minutes. You can do it in seconds. You can do it in your hand. Are the layers then different ages? If I flip these sand art toys over, are these layers different ages in here? They're all in the box at the same time. You're, you're supposed to prove tonight that how the layers, the geologic column, how can the top layer be younger? I'm asking you where it came from. You asked so many questions about clams it's and birds. Sick. and So what is okay, the sick. actual Hold question? On. Here's the actual question. How is the top layer younger? Where did it because come from? Because it was from? deposited last. Where did it come from? It's Moving eroded it from, from pre-existing sediments. Well, then it's still the same age. If you shuffle no. the deck of cards, the top card's on top. It's got to be younger. All the... All the you're not seeing you, it. You, you proved that this logic is bankrupt when you said that you are not 6,000 years old, even though you're made of atoms that have always been around. So they're dating the layers of the Holocene at 10,000 years. And they've showed the geologic yeah. column. Here, uh, yeah. Yeah, like volcanic. So, it. for example, oh, sorry. If you're going to pull something. Niles, up, Niles Eldridge, famous brand name evolutionist. He said, we date the rocks by the fossils. How can we then turn around and talk about patterns of evolutionary change through time? They're dating, here it is, now Zelders. You cannot tell, there's no simple way to look at a fossil and see how old it is unless you know the age of the rocks it comes from. They date the fossil by the layers, but then they date the layers by the fossils. There are about 12 or 15, maybe even 20 different layers of limestone in the world. They're all limestone. How do you tell if it's Ordovician limestone or Silurian limestone or Cambrian limestone? The only way to tell the difference is by the fossils. They date the layers. It's all limestone. They're dating the, the layers by the fossils and the fossils by the layers. It is circular reasoning. This guy said it's circular reasoning is inherent. We have to use circular reasoning. Char the charge of circular reasoning can be uh, denied, can be ignored, be not denied, or admitted. It's circular reasoning. You don't know the age no. of any of those layers. What's the question? How do we date fossils? No. How, you're, you're, you're claiming you know the top layer is younger because it was deposited last. Yep. I showed you a video. We showed the video. The layers might be forming horizontally with water moving laterally. That could form three or have four you, or five layers at the same time. Have you ever, like, you know, we dig like uh, mud core samples out of the continental shelves. We mm -hmm. do this same kind of thing in lakes. They right. do not find laterally laid down sediments in those places. How can you tell if you're drilling a core sample in a lake or on the continental shelf well, how it was laid down? You can't possibly know any such thing. Y'all, you're drilling through the set. I agree. Mount St. Helens, when it blew the mud in there, then later one of the lakes overflowed and cut a new canyon in there in minutes, and it had hundreds of layers stratified at Mount St. Helens, and they know the mud flowed in there at one time. As it flowed, it formed different layers. As this flows backwards, it's going to form 20 layers, just by flowing sideways. Your ge I know your geologic column is your Bible and you got to have that to, you know, get rejection of God and this is the real purpose. But it, the layers all formed in one year with the tide going back and forth, tidal pumping, it would make thousands of feet of mud layers containing bazillions of dead things that are going to turn to oil or coal if they're plants. Where are fossils forming today? <laughs> Nowhere. So is that your question? Like... You're not really very good at asking questions. You give a sermon and then you talk about five different things. And then, so is your question, are fossils forming today? My answer is no. Is okay. that your question? Are there fossils, okay. Are there fossils in the ground right now? Well, yeah. Like billions, if you want to count diatoms, trillions of fossils. Yeah. Is, yeah. Why aren't they forming? Probably. Today? If they're not forming, if they're not forming today, how do we get so many fossils in the ground? 
be, because there are vast stretches of time for these fossils ah. to collect. If you want me to like our fossils forming I mean, today, yeah, I guess technically there could be some fossils forming today. I guess I was see, I was thinking like, are we watching any of them form today or something like that? Which no. Well, nobody sees them forming today. So if no fossils are forming today, millions of years of no fossils was going to make billions in the ground. That's your logic? What? Millions of years of no fossils forming? Well, we, if they're not when, forming today, when did they didn't you, form No, I can't today. ask questions. That's right. But okay. nobody nobody sat around for a million years scouring the entire earth and said, dang, not a single fossil ever formed. So I don't, I don't understand your question. Well, I think the fact that we find fossils all tangled up in these giant fossil graveyards containing billions of fossils all tangled up is just like the big plastic islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean now. Things tend to co collect in the middle of the swirling waters. Noah's flood would provide that all over the world for a whole year. You would get all kinds of pockets of dead animals floating or dead trees floating around that would tend to be buried together, and, subsequently buried later. Fossils and yet be formed no rabbits record. with T-Rexes, no trilobites with dinosaurs, no trilobites with any Cenozoic uh, creatures at all. There is no such thing as a Cenozoic era. You got to prove that for you're assuming that to be true. There is no Cenozoic or Mesozoic or any of those layers. None of them. They don't exist. There are layers. But you guys put That's a your name argument on them. that they don't exist? No. The, the layers exist. But it's not an era. You're assuming this layer has an age. The layer is is there. We can study the layer. You the cannot scientific study the evidence age backs evidence. it up. For you to say that is just a dogma. That's why it's a religion. You make a dogmatic no, statement. No, it's done by science. I actually went over this. They came up with the names for those things. They put mm -hmm. them in sequence because there were so many fossils that never are found in the same layers globally. The scientists presumed, well, we have vast stretches of time where certain organisms never coexisted. And then the radiometric dating confirmed that. The, radio, well, the radiometric dating would have been the test that disproved it, or it would have been the test that said inconclusive, but it confirmed exactly what people hundreds of years ago thought. That is science at work. That is a successful scientific prediction. As far as I know, human and chicken fossils have never been found together. That proves humans and chickens did not live at the same time. That's your you can logic. find human and chicken bones together in places like Easter Island, for example. They okay. haven't turned to fossils yet, but... So we have never found, like I said before you changed my uh, statement, human and chicken fossils have never been found together. Therefore, humans and chickens did not live at the same time. You're, you're completely missing the point. The fact that layers, certain layers uh, form, uh, fossils are in any, uh, they're automatically going to be sorted based upon similar body density. Birds are going then to be found they in the aren't. same layer. They are. No, they're Why not. Do you know we find? Do you know we find? You know we find clams in the Triassic and the uh, Cenozoic, the the recent era. Oh, I think I said Cenozoic earlier when I meant to say Mesozoic. So, how is it that we find clams with um, organisms that you can types of organisms you can find today and in strata with all the organisms of the same like body plan or whatever, as you're saying, or no, let me make this more simple. We find clams and trilobites together, hard organisms. They have shells. I have some trilobite fossils. I should have brought them over here. We find those together. We also find clams in the same types of layers that we find things like, um, Cenozoic whales. So they're not sorted by density or, or the ability to swim or whatever in the water to, to tread water before they die. Are they? I think the fossils are sorted for many different reasons. There's lots of things but which cause them But not to, density. Well, for instance, if there was a flood today that covered our farm here, Dinosaur Adventure Land, I think you would find all the cows together because the cows hang out together. They don't normally hang out with the chickens, Okay. They're probably going to be sorted based upon their fossil, based upon their body density, based upon their mobility, their intelligence, their habitat. Of course, sea-dwelling creatures are going to be buried first in Noah's flood. They're already at the bottom. They're already in the water. So that's the, the, the circular reasoning no. of your geologic column. <laughs> no. You start with the assumption that the, this is the Cenozoic and it should contain these layers. If it should contain these fossils, if it doesn't contain those, oh wow, we must have dated it wrong. Let's give it a new name. Do they date the layers by the fossils they contain? 
you no, you date the objective way to date that. Well, I don't know if objective is probably not the right word, but anyways, we don't date them by the uh, exclusively by the fossils. The fossils and the layers have been dated with radiometric techniques, dating igneous inclusions or sills and things like that. I already answered this question. There are some fossils that we have found so many millions of around the planet, and we've been able to find igneous, uh, you know, inclusions or whatever near them that we know the window in which they occur. So if you're digging in the part of a world where you don't have access to igneous rocks to radiometrically date, but you find those index fossils, then you can, uh, then you know what era you're in based on prior data. So this, this claim about circular reasoning completely ignores all of the other sciences that go into studying fossils and geology in general. So Encyclopedia Britannica was wrong when they said they are dating the layers by the fossils and the fossils by the layers. Uh, let's see, uh, Derek, uh, Derek uh, Agar, uh, 40 years ago, said fossils have been and still are the most and best and most accurate method of dating the rocks that they occur in. I can think of no cases of radioactive decay being used to date fossils. Was he wrong? He got published in a peer-reviewed journal. Uh, it's probably out of context. I already told you, I already answered this. You don't date sedimentary rocks directly. You date igneous rocks that are near them. And because of the, what we call uh, the relative dating or whatever, you can get a window for fossils or sedimentary layers between igneous rocks. So American Journal of Science, American Journal of Science uh, said, uh, radiometric dating would not have been feasible if the geologic column had not been erected first. There's no way to simply look at a fossil and say how old it is unless you know the age of the rocks it comes from. If we yep. date the rocks by the fossils, how can we then turn around and talk about patterns of evolutionary change through time? Radiometric dating. The fossils? That's the answer. Yep. Radiometric dating. Well, do you understand the assumptions in radiometric dating? Do you want to do a whole debate on that? I cover that clearly on my video number seven. Go there ahead. What issues do you successor. have with it? Well, I, I, well, can, I can address it if you just want me to address it. We're on geologic it. column tonight. This is from, uh, let's see, uh, American Journal of Science. Rocks do date the fossils, but the fossils date the rocks more accurately. Stratigraphy cannot avoid this kind of reasoning if it insists on temporal concepts. Circularity is inherent. You have to use circular reasoning. You can charge people. If they, if they say you're using circular reasoning, well, you can ignore their claim like you're doing mine. You can deny it, or you can just admit it. Yeah, we use circular reasoning. How did you know? Is the this age the of only that question you came up with for tonight? We date igneous rocks within the strata, within the geologic mm -hmm. column. What, that's what how we get. No, that's how we get dates for these things. Are, what if there are no igneous rocks within that strata? There are huge parts of the world where there are no no igneous rocks, no volcanoes, no uh, intrusive igneous rock. So luckily, it's a layers? great big world, and we find the same oh, kind of layers all over the world, and we do find, um, we do find igneous layers. This can also include like volcanic ash, for example, um, and we can date those things. Well, he keeps saying we, we, we. Is he is he actually doing this stuff? Are, are you are you on the field doing the scientific research? This is research flat Earth logic. They tell me, do you have any pictures of of the globe? As if as if the question is. Have I been to space and seen the Earth? No, the question is, does that evidence exist? So it you don't have credentials either, Kent. So don't sit here and be like, oh, have you done any scientific tests? Here we go with the ad hominem. I knew that was coming. Okay, uh, let's see. Hold on. Uh, I was looking You're for allowed to say, Mr. Peterson, you don't do science. You're not a scientist either. When I bring that up, it's an ad hominem attack. What do you mean, I don't do science? What do you mean, do science? Science means knowledge. How do you do knowledge? You don't. I, I, you taught science for 15 years, and you don't know That's how correct. science is done? I do. Science is a collection of information based upon observation, experimentation, testing. We Google it. The definition of science. What do we know? We know okay, What scientific tests? Oh, not. That's on my turn. Sorry. We do not know that cows come from an amoeba. We don't know that. We know cows make baby cows. Ours is about to have one. So that is science. Yes, I do science. I watch when the cow has a baby. I, I've already got a $5 bet. It's going to be a calf. Okay? When our sheep have babies, they come out to be sheep. Every time. Every time. No exceptions. But 
you're claiming, anyway, the, the, I, as I mentioned earlier, I didn't answer the question. How do you tell the difference between Ordovician limestone and Cambrian limestone? If there's no radiometric there's dating, no how many times do I have to tell no, you this? What's that? Tell me again, one more time. Radiometric dating. What if there's no radiometric rock to date around there? I answered this question not five minutes ago. It's a great big world, isn't it? That's the answer? It's a big world? Do you not remember my answer? Yeah, that's a dumb answer. What do you mean it's a big no, world? No, that wasn't there my entire world. answer. I was shortening it to try not to waste people's time. And now you are now you are wasting their time because now I have to deliberate it's, it again not, not because really, you're not, playing not. dumb. Uh, let's see. I only heard about part part of what he said there, Donnie. He's cutting out real bad. Um, the If there are huge parts of the world where there are no volcanoes, no igneous rock to even date. So... The, and the geologic column was made up 120 years before they even knew about radiometric dating. So they yeah. now have an established geologic column that they think is part of science because we've been teaching it for over 100 years. And now if you date a rock, it, we can go into geologic dating if you'd like. It's based on some very obvious assumptions, whether it's carbon dating, potassium, argon, rubidium, strontium, lead 208, lead 206. They're all based on the assumption that the decay rate has remained constant, that we know the initial content. You don't know how much uh -oh. was in it when it started. And you don't know it's never been contaminated. They get bad dates all the time. When they test the same sample five times and get five dates, how do you know which one to pick? By the geologic column made up 120 years before there was any geologic dating or radiometric dating. Eric, let's That's consider that a, a question and feel free to respond. Go ahead. Sure. Um, so I, I feel bad for asking a question, but I can't really address it without asking it. Kent, don't you no think that the universe is finely tuned? I think it originally was. I think man's messed it up pretty bad. Yeah, I think, right. Okay, you know that one of the um, finely tuned constants is the decay constant? Right. Second law of thermodynamics. I'm familiar with that. Right. So when you say you don't know if the decay rates have always been the same, according to your worldview, changing those constants would cause the universe to be destroyed. Because if you change any of them a tiny bit, gravity oh, collapses on, no. matter and you can't get whatever, whatever, whatever. So you think that the decay or you ought to think that the decay rates are constant to hold consistent with your own worldview. We know there are things that affect the radioactive decay oh. rate. We know the sun. Absolutely the sun goes false. Through, the sun goes through solar sunspot cycles. The radiation from the sun affects radiometric decay on the Earth. No. There are things that affect it, the atmospheric. There's a whole books written on this topic of the the decay rate of a, like say, carbon fourteen. There there are things that can change that. I'll we'll do a whole debate on no. that another time. But <laughs> I can address it right now if you want. Well, the geologic column, you're saying we know the age because we bracketed it between two layers of lava flow or something that we can date, okay? There, you don't know that you can date them accurately. They find that wild dates all the time. And all that was done in the last 70 years when they taught the geologic column, which you're supposed to prove tonight, 120 years before that. What did they know the layers were different ages if they all formed sideways like the video shows? That's real science, observable science multiple layers forming laterally mount st helens the mud flowed in from one volcanic flow i've been up there my sister lives up near there the mud flowed in blocked off the Tootle river the river backed up made it made a lake went over the top cut a notch made a miniature grand canyon in minutes and there in that notch there were dozens, maybe even hundreds of layers i've got pictures of that somewhere here so all the layers formed in one mud flow but to, if you go down in that canyon today and look at all these layers, you would assume the top layer is younger than the bottom layer. No, we saw this happen back in 1970s. All the layers form by lateral movement of a whole lot of mud. I can Ken, form multi, many, many layers in minutes with this little thing right here. Ken, on, on those points, can you land the plane on those points with, with a question that kind of sums it all up? And then we'll let Eric respond to it. I'm still back to my question. How do you know the top layer is younger? I've answered that so many times. Um, right, it's going to be time. radiometric dating. I actually, I have some stuff on radiometric dating to um, assist in my answer, but I'd have to share my screen. This, this is I, I will say, if the answer to that question is a radiometric dating related, 
answer, then I think we can dive into that a little bit since it's it's related. So Eric, if you wanted yeah. to do that, feel free to to do so. Yeah. Well, I was. I, well, yeah. Never mind. So here, I'll show you the the data I have because I actually brought data. Ooh. Um, I clicked share. There we go. Yeah. So, uh, radiometric dating. So there's a site in Japan. I don't remember the name off the top of my head, but there is a lake and that lake has all of these horizontal layers of sediment in it. And like tree rings, like, um, ice core samples, like, well, like, like those two things. We have a working scientific assumption that these are seasonal layers and we can count the layers and count how old the sediment is. Now that is a working scientific hypothesis. It is just an assumption, but there are scientific tests you can do to confirm it like carbon dating. And they've actually, they've double correlated this. They've done it with carbon dating and they've done it with tree rings. And uh, look at the fitness of this graph where we have, this one is tree rings over here and the uh, carbon 14. Look at the correlation between those two things. And then this one is the uh, the layers and the uh, carbon dating. Now this is extremely important because here, I need to show you this. This is what a correlation of 90% looks like. 90% is very high, but those dots are still a lot more spread out than people would probably think they are. Here's 99.9 .9, or uh, uh, yeah, 99.9 .9 correlation. And look at the correlation we have here. So notice that this is an extremely strong correlation. Now, if the sedimentary layers are not annual, then carbon dating would contradict them. If carbon dating doesn't work, then the sediment layers will contradict the carbon dating. If neither one is correct, because this is something else, Kent, excuse me, can say, if neither of those things work, if layers forming, you can't assume anything based off that, and you can't assume anything based on carbon dating, then the data won't correlate. It would be the most wild coincidence of all time, but the data does correlate at an absurdly high rate. So yes, we do have very strong evidence supporting carbon dating and other radiometric dating techniques. There are zero contradictions in it. We have even dated, um, like we've dated things of known age, like Vesuvius um, or well, Pompeii, the Vesuvius eruption in Pompeii and other things of known historical origin using these carbon dating techniques. And there are no contradictions in them. There are some weird things like the snails, Kent wants to bring that up, then I, I'm happy to talk about that. But here, I'll stop hogging the screen. Okay. Okay, we'll wrap it up there. <clears throat> and since we're kind of at the 25-minute mark anyways for Kent's cross-exam, and there's several points on the table there, let's free flow it for a little bit. So Kent, feel free to uh, respond however you'd well, like. That, unless you want to take time for audience questions. A lot of people waiting for that. But uh, the uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned, the, the, any de decay rating, the decay, measuring something about how fast something decays is obviously based on some assumptions that you know that the decay rate has always been the same and you know how much was in it when it started. If the Earth had a lot more C14 in it uh, originally, or let's say the Earth had less C14, suppose the Bible is correct and the Earth was surrounded by a canopy of water above the firmament that blocked out UV light and very little C14 formed. And so carbon-14 would be very scarce in the plants and in the animals when they die we would dig them up and date them by today's standard. How much C14 is in the atmosphere today is our measuring stick. Well, that's the wrong stick to measure with because they had less in it to be. I use the illustration with a candle. If you walked into a room and found a candle burning and I asked you, when was it lit? You said, I don't know. Well, let's do some science. Let's measure it. The candle is seven inches tall. We all agree it's seven inches tall. Nobody argued. Let's measure the rate of burn. It's burning an inch an hour. Okay, question, when was it lit? This is how carbon dating works. We're trying to see, we're seeing a, 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 a formerly living object dating how much C14 compared to uh, C12 is in it. Uh, and and so assuming that we know how, how much was in it when it started. You can't know such a thing. And you don't know if the candle, you don't know how The scientific was, tests confirm it, though. We've dated well, artifacts that. of yeah. known ages like Pompeii. And the carbon dating sure. works. So we can confirm with events of known historical dates or whatever, 
that the carbon-14 yields that date. It's even it's even been done with, um, oh shoot, where is it? I have one on here where they did like argon dating or something, um, and they can sure. get they can get accurate results uh, within two thousand years, which is pretty extraordinary mm-hmm. because um, that type of dating is typically used for um, that the half life is much greater than that. So, oh yeah, you're much greater. Okay, ever since they've done they've they've had found bad dates come up. How do you know if one of them's bad, your honor? How do you know any of them are good? You don't living mollusk no. shells, living clamshells dated at 2300 years old. Science magazine. That was in 1963. Is it getting better? 1970. They say if a carbon date supports our theories, we put it in the main text. If it doesn't entirely contradict them, we put it in a footnote. If it's out of date, we drop it. So they're going to keep testing until they find the date they want to match. Look, freshly killed seal, carbon dated 1,300 years old, Arctic Journal. They just killed it. Is it 1,300 no. years old? No. The idea that you take outliers and then extrapolate data from outliers and say, this explains everything, that it, you have just done the equivalent of, I'm going to claim that the average male height is 5 foot 10. And Kent goes, the existence of Shaquille O'Neal disproves that claim. No, it does not disprove that claim. Um, as far as Donnie, is it okay if I share my screen real quick? Nope, yes. I haven't pushed the button yet, so sorry, my mistake for not being ready. So, like this thing with science, this is something that really annoys me because I talk to science deniers all the time, like flat earthers, who I know Kent doesn't like either. But he does the right. same kinds of things that they say. Totally. Why does Kent think that he figured something out that scientists didn't already think of? decades ago like the problem of okay. we don't know how much radioactive material or parent material we started with in the first one question place. at a time can i answer that well it's not a question i'm just a, we're doing a, a free flow got a thing question right mark now. after it it looks like i got a question mark after it on my screen um well it's a rhetorical question fair enough i'll just i this is literally i'm just going to show one slide and be done very quickly so um kent's pretending that if he doesn't know then nobody knows but we have something called isochron dating and isochron dating doesn't require knowing how much parent material you start with you take the ratio of parent material radiogenic isotope daughter product and non-radiogenic daughter isotope what's well, not a daughter product but a non-radiogenic isotope of the same element as the daughter product and you compare multiple different samples and they converge Scientists figured this out a really long time ago. And again, with the carbon dating and other techniques, we date known archaeological sites and get accurate results. So I'll let you address that. I did want to talk about the snail thing. Um, when Kent, you're done, if that's fine. Okay. Kent, if you wanted to respond to anything on that slide, including the rhetorical yeah. question, go ahead. Slide back up. Okay. The one you had with the question for me. Sorry. Why does Kent think he figured something out scientists didn't already think of decades ago? Well, first place, for millennia, scientists thought the flood of Noah explained all the layers. It wasn't until 1830 that the geologic column was invented. So it's not me. Thousands and thousands of people through all of history did not believe the layers were millions of years different in age. That's the one that's the newcomer on the block about this geologic column and millions of years different in age. I don't think, and millions of other Christians, uh, uh, Christians and scientists, and uh, people all around the world agree with me that the flood of Noah did all this, and the layers were from the flood of Noah. So it's not just me. Don't isolate me, Eric. Lots Bandwagon of fallacy, it. appeal to popularity, uh, and That's a genetic you're fallacy. You're saying That's that a world record. All the scientists believe this. You're on the bandwagon right there. You think, well, all the science, majority opinion doesn't prove anything. 55 million Germans followed Hitler. That proves he's true. He's right. No, it doesn't. In science, Many consensus people. is the most powerful, um, how would you say it? Well, you're saying that, you're making that statement. You don't know what the science consensus is, and you don't know. It's published and Germany, publicly available. Oh, I bet in Nazi Germany there were no published uh, journals against Hitler, so that proves he's right. Nobody See, dared publish against Hitler. this is flat Hitler. earth conspiratorial thinking. This is you avoiding the question. You're saying majority opinion is proof of something. Majority opinion is never proof of anything. What are the facts? Do you think that science does successfully answer questions about the natural world? Oh, I love science, okay? I don't think you do. Then why do you selectively... Isn't it kind of cute that you selectively choose to downplay and delegitimize sciences 
only oh, when they God, disagree with your science? precious fiction? Eric, Isn't that just a Eric, little bit convenient? No, listen, I love science, and I'm concerned about this poison called evolution stirred in with our science. You know, beer is sold at football games. Beer has nothing to do with football. And evolution is stirred into our science books. It has nothing to do with science. I could talk to biology, a physical science, earth science. I'll take a quiz against anybody you know on quite a few of those topics. I think I'm pretty up to date on what I taught them. I understand them really well, whether you like it or not, whether you like my degree or not. I think if somebody goes to college for years and comes out with a PhD and believes they came from a rock, I don't like their degree either. But let's stick on the topic. The fact is, it doesn't matter what all the scientists teach. And a lot of people do believe with me, but we're not going by majority opinion. The fact is, we got trees standing up running through all these layers. If we carbon dated those layers, they might come up with different ages. But yet we know the trees had to, they had to happen within a year or two before the tree could rot. It just doesn't, it, it, radio, the troubles of radiocarbon dating are undeniably deep and serious. Despite 35 years of improvement, technological refinement, you know, better testing equipment, the underlying assumptions have been strongly challenged and warnings are out that the radiometric car, radiocarbon dating may soon find itself in a crisis situation. Continuing use of the method depends on a fix it as we go approach, allowing for contamination here, fractionization there, and calibration whenever possible. It should be surprising then that half the dates are rejected. And the wonder surely is that the remaining half have come to be accepted. No matter how useful it is, carbon dating, radiocarbon method is not capable of yielding accurate and reliable results. There are gross discrepancies. The chronology is uneven and relative. The accepted dates are actually the selected dates. This whole blessed thing is nothing but 13th oh, century man. alchemy. Hey, Anthropological Journal of Canada, argue with them, a peer-reviewed journal. They're saying half the dates are rejected. How do you know the how do you know the other half aren't wrong? You're the one that wants to put your hang your hat on the stupid carbon dating and say that's proof. There you go. Eight, What's wrong with this data, Kent? Oh, you're you're changing the subject. Okay. No, I'm they, not. These guys you said, said you said in that thing that the the Carbon dating just doesn't work. There's problems. What's the problem with this data? Well, tree ring dating only goes back a few thousand years. This is You're radio carb. This is carbon dating correlated with tree ring data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If so the, why is it that we have a correlation of what looks like 0. 0.999? Well, if it's not accurate, why does it correlate so perfectly? Well, if, if half the dates are rejected, did they put all the dates in there? The, the ones that were accepted are correlating. Sure, yeah, they are. I bet, I bet, I bet the acceptance of Adolf Hitler correlated. Everybody accepted it because you know, there's nobody about published the in the journal. It's so this creepy. is this is exactly the same. I'm trying to get you to understand. You're you're again back on the majority opinion argument. How do you know they didn't throw out half the dates before they made their chart? Let I, I don't there, take do a, conspiratorial do a, thinking seriously. Or do a blind. Okay, here you go. Do a blind test. Pick 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 a sample of, of wood. Take it to five different laboratories, have them test it, just pay to have it tested. They will get five different dates. Take a sample of coal. You'll get very different dates. They, they, it happens. They, I, here we go. Here's the one you wanted me to pull up. Shells from living snails carbon dated at 27,000 years old. So I'll address Was that. The, but you, So you don't? So what's the problem with this data? You're just saying that maybe it's a coincidence? Is that your actual response? No, no. I'm saying you've got a bunch of dots on the paper that I have no idea if they're accurate or not. Maybe there's 5,000 more dots that should go someplace else and make a different line. Those are the dates that they accepted because they match the theory that they want to prove. Okay. Maybe In your snail data is inaccurate. Boom. There. I win. Okay. Science. Science. Call, talk, talk to me. Talk to Science Magazine. They're the ones published it. Okay, so this snail thing has been studied. Have you ever had a um, a saltwater aquarium, Kent? No, I've had aquariums, not a saltwater. I've, 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 I've had some friends that have had them, yep. You know that they have to put what's called live rock in it? Mm-hmm. So it, actually this happens with freshwater too, because if I had freshwater crabs in my classroom, and you have to put some calcium in there because they incorporate the calcium carbonate into their shells. It's required. And snails do that kind of thing. They also will eat like algae and stuff that's growing on rocks. And with that, they incorporate carbon into their bodies. So this, the material that these snails are getting that from is limestone, which is a carboniferous rock. But limestone's mm -hmm. ancient. And so the carbon in them, the carbon-14, has decayed long ago. So these, these snails 
there's kind of a unique thing going on here where the snails are incorporating very low concentration C14 carbon into their bodies. So this is, it's called a carbon sink. This has been known about for right. a really, really long time. And then that thing, you brought up a seal earlier too, like a living seal was dated wait, wait, too. Stay, stay, on, stay on the snail, let me answer. So you're admitting that the sample might be contaminated. You might get a wrong date from a sample. Is that what you're admitting? Well, well yeah, you can get a, you can get a wrong, um, you can get a false positive test at the doctor too. But, you're, you're but the, the overwhelming subject. majority of tests are accurate. Ah, okay. so like that thing I showed you earlier, there's hundreds of samples there that are that are okay. that correlate with the the correlation is 99.9. Okay. All I saw was a bunch of dots that you put on a piece of paper or somebody put on a piece of paper. I don't know. I didn't study. I did, I'd like to see the more deal. To I bet they threw out a lot of dots that didn't match their line. Here we have proof that a snail shell can be contaminated by what it eats. Yep. Can't it? Okay. Yeah. Then could could other things, is there any other, that's what I said. All the dating methods, you have to assume it's not been contaminated. You assume you know the original content and you assume the decay rates remain constant. There are things that affect the decay rate. So there, there aren't. There are that the isochron dating deals with that. We already went over that. I already went over how known archaeological, or archaeological sites of known ages, we get the correct numbers by doing the radiometric dating, whether it's carbon or some other Eric, versions too. We have a we have a snail here. We know the age. It's still alive. Why did it give twenty seven thousand years? It's still alive. You know the age of it. You can watch it crawl around. I answered. You can't watch. I answered that question three question. minutes ago. You didn't answer it. You avoided yes, it. I, you're saying. What, you're, you're, what are you you're, talking okay, about? Okay. You're admitting by your answer. They incorporate that the limestone carbon from limestone into their bodies. That limestone would be so extremely low in carbon-14, obviously. So if, if you're dating a tree ring that has got protected leaves going out to the atmosphere that are sucking in carbon dioxide and changing it, some of, some of the carbon dioxide is radioactive C14. Do you know that the amount in the atmosphere today has always been that amount when that tree was alive? Could it have yeah. had a different source of carbon to draw from? This is my point. You don't know the initial content. If, if indeed the C14, was, if there was very little C14 in the atmosphere uh, 5,000 years ago, the trees that are growing in that environment with very little C14 because they're protected by a crystal and canopy shell like the Bible teaches, well, they would, they would show up very much older just because they had less to start with. Where's your evidence You're of using that? today's tape measure, today's tape measure to measure a sample that you shouldn't use this tape measure. Where's your today, evidence? Right here on the snail. We know it didn't. It's not. It's not the same age. No, we know that's not right. Where's your evidence that there was more or less, whichever you said, carbon fourteen in the atmosphere five thousand years well, ago? I think the burden of proof is on you to prove it's always been the same. You made you the can't positive claim. Prove any such thing. Yeah, we do have you a burden of proof, and we've proved it by dating things of known age, um, by dating things Johnny, of known age and getting the right numbers, and correlating it with sediment layers, for example, and with tree rings. If if those dating methods don't work, then the data can't correlate. Okay. If you if you say, well, I think the number of pull ups I do every morning correlates to the number of earthquakes that happen every year, I guarantee that that data, if you graph it, will not produce a straight line. This data produces straight lines. You and that data is that's hundreds of samples. Your one Ooh. sample of the snail, two samples of a snail does not overturn the overwhelming rest of the scientific data. Gentlemen. Well, go ahead, Don. Okay, that, I, only heard about a, I only heard about a third of that. He's breaking up real bad. Something's wrong with somebody's computer somewhere. Uh -huh. it, it might I'm be on your end, up. Pat, because he was coming in okay for me. Am I coming in okay? Can you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, yours sounds, yours sounds fine. Several times this has come in garbled, but the Okay, well, let's, uh, gentlemen, we could probably debate that issue and that topic for another three hours. We are in bonus minutes, so let's wrap it up there. And if you guys would like, because the uh, discussion in total was pretty comprehensive, you you guys touched on quite a few points on on this issue related to the geologic column. 
the fossil record and dating methods. Would you like a two minute summary for the, each of you just to kind of wrap up your thoughts, wrap up your points, land the plane, give everything home. Eric, let's start with you. You don't have to take two minutes. Just feel free to summarize your thoughts. We'll do the same for you, Kat. And then we'll get into some audience questions. Go ahead. So um, I know I showed this uh, several times already, but this is the overall strongest thing. So science, yes, makes predictions. It has hypotheses. It has working assumptions in it. Long, long ago, we came up with these ideas of the layers being different ages, representing different time periods in Earth's history, so on and so forth. Well, then we learned how to date things with radiometric dating, and those tests came true. There's the question of, is the radiometric dating actually valid? What you see here, and on this slide here, this is um, cross-disciplinary scientific, I don't know, uh, uh, testing or whatever. When you have multiple different disciplines, dendrochronology, I don't know what you would call the study of, of sediment layers, sedimentology perhaps, and carbon dating that all yield, they all correlate almost perfectly like this, it means that we have valid, reliable methods. That is just simply how science works. The only options are to claim it's a, it, the weirdest coincidence of all time or to just feign ignorance and be like, well, I wasn't there, I didn't see it, or claim that there's some sort of massive conspiracy. Um, so that's all I need to say to finish. Okay, thank you, Eric, for that closing summary. Kent, we'll give you the same, about two, two to three minutes. Go ahead. Okay. I think we have observable evidence that the layers have to form more rapidly than he wishes. Okay. We have petrified trees connecting all the layers. This is pretty clear evidence. The tree did not stand there for millions of years waiting for layers to form around it. The layers had to form quickly. We have historical evidence of hundreds of different flood legends around the world. People have always believed there was a worldwide flood. Many millions of people have. Okay. The Bible certainly teaches there was a worldwide flood. And the t we know how tides work, moon, pulling, moon holding the water while the earth spins under it, makes us see the tide go up, down, up, down every six hours, 12 and a half minutes. That tidal pumping, if it was not interrupted by banging into continents, would become harmonic and go up and down 200 feet. The water going sideways is what makes all the layers. We see experimental evidence of that. You can see a video, experiments in stratification. The layers form sideways, and you might have one on the bottom that's actually younger than one on top because you might get five or six or 10 layers forming horizontally with the movement of the tide in and out. I live in a gravel pit here in Lenox, Alabama. We have gravel, sand, clay, gravel, sand, clay, seven layers of the consecutive layers. They go from here to North Carolina. And the gravel rocks, if you come, I'll give you a bunch all you want. They're rounded, smooth rounded. I think that's pretty clear indication. They were tumbled around like in a rock tumbler. Noah's flood would do that. I think the geologic layers that we see, the evidence shows clearly they had to form very rapidly or you wouldn't have trees standing up. If you had a layer of water going sideways at, at this latitude, 800, 900 miles an hour, it's going to make a layer of gravel from here to North Carolina in 40 minutes. Then it's calm for a few hours between tides and the sand and clay settle out. Then the tide goes rushing the other way to empty that big bump and you get another layer of gravel. And we have it right here. You can come see it. Gravel, sand, clay, gravel, sand, clay. I think it all formed in three days. So I think the observable scientific evidence is petrified trees that are standing up throw. The layers cannot be different ages, no matter how they carbon date. I don't care if you dated these layers and got different numbers. I'd say, look, you're telling me that tree stood there for 42 million years and didn't rot or fall over? I think this is clear evidence that the, the layers of the earth had to form rapidly. I think the historical evidence of a flood the historical legends of a flood, Tyrite, they fit this, it correlates perfectly. All the legends, the Bible teaching, the, the observable evidence of rapid layers, it all is a perfect correlation. The Bible is right. Go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you, Kent, for that closing summary. Gentlemen, that wraps up our opening statements. A very thorough discussion slash cross-exam and short closing summaries or statements and so with that let's get into some of these audience questions we've had a a fantastic chat with a lot of questions here so let's let's do it the way we typically do whoever the questions for 
we'll give them the the uh, last word and so that way we can move along smoothly okay let's let's start from the beginning with these super chats we'll bump those to the top this one comes in from samir planet peterson five dollar super chat is the bottom of petrified trees millions of years older than the top please give a logical explanation go ahead uh <clears throat> No, not necessarily. Well, okay, the tree itself, the entire tree is one age. Um, millions of, so I, I guess they would mean the layers surrounding it. So I actually have a picture that I can show and share for this, if this is okay. The um, I'm actually fine with the idea of rapid burial happening, uh, because in order for something large like a, a tree to fossilize, you, you kind of do need pretty rapid burial. That's fine. But that doesn't prove that every single layer on Earth uh, was rapidly buried because we have like tens, we have thousands and thousands of meters worth of worth of uh, layers to account for. So these are petrified trees in Yellowstone National Park. Now, whether Kent is right or I'm right, these petrified trees are not the age of present day. Kent would say they're about 4000 years old. I would say they're millions of years old. But clearly, these trees are exposed which means if a volcanic eruption happens, if a flood happens, if a landslide happens, if wind-blown sediments cover and bury the rest of this tree, then yes, the tree will be far, far older than the sediments surrounding it. And Kent, like I said, Kent would think it's just thousands of years. I would think millions of years. But there's absolutely no problem. Like Kent a little while ago said, the tree couldn't have sat around waiting for all the layers to build up because it would have rotted away. It's a fossil, and then it, it can become fossilized. The uh, overlying layers can erode away. Clearly, they have, and then new sediments can be buried on top of it. So there's absolutely no issue, uh, no contradiction with with any of that. Thank you, Eric. Kat, the floor is yours. Well, I did, did not hear him answer the Samir's question. Is the bottom of the petrified tree millions of years older than the top? No, the whole tree is the same age. And even if it's buried in a bunch of layers, so he's claiming these petrified trees had to petrify and then later the layers formed around them. That's an option, I suppose he could imagine that, but could just as easily be all the layers formed very quickly and it all petrified while the rock hardened around it at the same time. It's not just one or two trees in Yellowstone. There are thousands of petrified trees in the standing position all over the world. The purpose of the debate tonight was to, for him to defend his Bible, the geologic column, and claim that the layers should be called different ages. I think it's pretty obvious from the observable evidence, the layers are not all different ages. Layers can form rapidly. The trees prove that. We experimental evidence, Mount St. Helens, when it erupted, it blew the mud down into Spirit Lake, blocked off the Toodle River, built a lake, went over the top, a few years later, cut a giant canyon. They call it the miniature Grand Canyon or something of Spirit Lake. And it contains hundreds of layers. I should have called up the pictures of this. I got them here somewhere. And all the layers formed by sideways movement of the mud. A mud one mudslide made all the layers at one time. Huh? Maybe Noah's flood made all the layers in one year. And they turned to rock. And it could have fossils standing up in them. No problem. See, I don't have a problem with it at all. So, uh, Samir, the bottom of the petrified tree is not millions of years different than the top. They're all the same age. All the layers formed in one year. Thank you, Kent. And Eric, you get the last word because this one was for you. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll be real quick. Kent um, said that I didn't answer the question. I did answer the question. I actually fixed the question because the tree is obviously of one age, whether Kent is right or I'm right. It's the layers in question. And I did so I did answer it. Um, I didn't say that for all trees, all the layers surrounding them are millions of years older than them, but they can be because of the mo the uh, example that I showed. So, Okay, thank you. Planet Peterson. Okay, next question. We'll get one for you. Now, Kent. And so <laughs> this comes in from JC. Five dollars super chat. Appreciate the question. Question for Kent: If the geologic column is a mere construct, how do you explain the two hundred and fifty-year scientific consensus 
on global stratification plus fossil records? Well, the question has an on obvious global built-in assumption. He's assuming that there is such a correlation that everybody's always agreed for 250 years. Uh, that several things are wrong with that. First of all, you don't know any such thing, okay? Secondly, majority opinion has never been a way to prove things in science. What does the data show? I don't care what everybody believes. What does it show? For years, they thought, if you're sick, you have bad blood. Take out your blood. You'll get better. That's how George Washington died. His own doctors bled him. The scientific consensus of the day was, your blood's gone bad. Take it out. It was wrong. The sci We've had this hundreds of examples of this through history, whether it be medical science or geologic science or any kind of science. The scientific consensus may be wrong, even if the majority, even if everybody believes something that doesn't make it true. You should always be willing to say, look, let's take a fresh look at the evidence. I don't care what anybody else says. Let's look at the evidence. It looks to me like all these layers had to form in real quickly, in less than a year. And that fits perfectly with what the Bible teaches. So I don't think that there has been a 250-year scientific consensus. Thousands of scientists object to what they're teaching now today. The thousands and thousands of scientists refuse to believe in this dumb theory of evolution. Nobody's ever seen animals go to different, change different kinds. They imagine it happened. The scientific consensus might be, well, it did happen. We made a chart. We drew some lines on paper connecting all the animals. That's proof. That's not proof of any such thing. It's, a, it's artwork. That's all it is. And so this geologic column, it doesn't exist anywhere in the world. Show me where you can find these 10 consecutive layers in, in order. I Googled it this afternoon. Where can it be found? They, can't, they, they think there's not a single place on the planet that isn't missing at least one of the layers. Most of the places are missing four or five of their 10, 10 major geologic eras. Google it. Where does the geologic column exist? Nowhere except the textbook. It's artwork. It's all it is. Artwork. Imagination. Kent's re response to the fact that the science correlates is just to say that maybe it doesn't correlate. I mean, that's, that's all we heard there. So. I pointed out the obvious assumption in his question. Yeah, he that, said, that, How that do doesn't you prove that, that it's false. In, well, by, by he, claims, he claims there's a scientific consensus. Show me that there is. We, we've done that there's all no night. So I don't want to. You're just imagining. I showed you a bunch of scientific journals saying, look, we don't know about the geologic column from Scientific American, from all kinds of different peer reviewed journals saying, look, the layers are dated by the fossils and the fossils are dated by the layers. And the carbon dating is not even possible without the geologic column first. I showed you the scientific journal. The scientific consensus is not what this guy questions, what his question asked. I'm sorry, I disagree. And again, I point out, even if it was the scientific consensus, I think we're allowed to challenge that any time. I think that's what science is. Questioning scientific beliefs is what science is supposed to do. That's what evidence. doing science is about. Making find, Somebody makes a claim, let's test it. You're making a claim that the layers are different ages. That you're supposed to defend that tonight. I think I showed you clearly they're not. We tested it. You lose. I, I showed you the tests, the carbon dating, and, and with the sediment layers perfectly correlated. I want to get to as many okay. questions as we can. So I, so, but right, guys, I appreciate the banter. You you both keep this fun and memorable. So here we go. Maze page, ten dollars super chat. It's for you now, Eric from Planet Peterson. What date? Actually, no, you said you are Planet Peterson, right? You're not from the planet. You are the... Okay, well, here we go. What date would Planet Peterson assign to the diamonds and dinosaur bones that have C14 in them? Go ahead. Um, I There is a paper on this, and I didn't have the paper ready for tonight. Shame on me. But this test, this paper surrounded this has been misquoted ad nauseum. So... There is such a thing as background radiation. We can do like um, the spectroscopy or not spectroscopy, um, spectrophotometry or something like that. Where you take material down, you blast all of its atoms and count the atoms. We can count absurdly tiny quantities of, of atoms. Um, and there are absurd numbers of atoms in any sample. So what they found in this paper was you can put things that we know don't have any carbon in them, like tin, into the device that, that measures the concentration of each atom or whatever, and it finds a tiny bit of C14 in there. It's getting in there from the environment. Like, for example, a, a, a helium balloon leaks. How? Because the helium atoms are so microscopic that they can go through a material that is considered to be a solid, 
right? So the idea of contamination happening, microscopic amounts of it happening, is not really surprising. And again, things that have no carbon in them show a tiny bit of C14. So this doesn't prove that the carbon in the diamonds is actually that young because you find C14 in samples with no carbon in them whatsoever. Thank you, Eric. Kat, the floor is yours. Go ahead. There have been quite a few samples found in the last 15 years and articles published about them, about dinosaur bones that are not even fossilized, that still have soft tissue and red blood cells in them. Are they, are they truly 70 million years old? And when you carbon date them, see, carbon, date, carbon dating, you start with an amount, 5,700 years later, half of it's gone. 5,700 more years, half of the half is gone. You go from a half to a fourth to an eighth to a sixteenth to not much to, they say 50,000 is the max. All carbon should be gone in 50,000 years, carbon 14, okay? All of it, 50,000 years. His question, why do the dinosaur bones still have carbon 14 in them? You did not answer the question. If, this, if it's truly 70 million years ago, the dinosaurs lived, why do they have any carbon-14 in them at all? They're, why are you able to date dinosaur bones? Why can they date soft tissue? Anything living could be carbon-dated, I suppose. It would show up with a number. Why isn't it all gone if it's 70 million? Kent, I have, the, I have a high suspicion that you have no clue where carbon-14 comes from. I do indeed. Go ahead. Where does it come from? Radiation from the sun strikes nitrogen, okay, and changes it to carbon-14, nitrogen-14 to carbon-14. The carbon-14 attaches to, or the very radiometric carbon attaches to oxygen and becomes carbon dioxide. Plants breathe in CO2 in the respiration process for plants yep, yep, yep. and make it part of their tissue. Then why so did you say the all the C14 tissue. should be gone if the earth is constantly making C14? No, the dinosaur is not taking it in anymore. Once he dies, he, he's not eating anymore. The carbon-14 found in dinosaur bones should be from the diet that they ate. They ate the atmospheric carbon the doesn't Earth get into the dinosaur bones. The Earth is constantly making it. It can be introduced as as contamination. So anyways, I'm supposed to have the last word. I won't, I won't waste more time because I know we have a lot of questions. So carbon-14 can be contaminated. And, the, 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 and you do know that the, the, clay, the decay rate does not remain the same. Dy they, they get carbon. The plants get it from the sun, from the atmosphere. The animals eat the plants and make it part of their body. You and I have carbon-14 in us. And that's totally dependent on how much is in the atmosphere from the plants that we ate. If the world was different 5,000 years ago, they would have a different number to start with. You don't know the starting point to carbon date anything. You're assuming today's tape measure works on these things that might have had a very different environment. We know it can be contaminated. And the purpose was tonight was not carbon dating. It was the geologic column. The layers can't possibly be billions of years different in age, Eric. I know you'd like them to be, because that gives you time to turn your frog to a prince. But it's not scientifically feasible. The layers can't be. So, Eric, you that? get the last word. Go ahead. Here's My data yours. looks like this. Kent's data looks like what if, which is no data at all. Next question. Well, you, do some, you do some more dots on paper. I'm proud of you. They learned that in first grade, I think. Second, kindergarten, maybe. But go ahead. So your answer to why dinosaur bones still have carbon-14 in them is to draw lines Can on paper. go to the next question out. for the sake of people yeah. that paid money yeah. for go this? For the sake of avoiding that one. Go ahead. People paid money for this, so be courteous. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You have supporters here, too. Yeah, I know. Those we got a good mix. <laughs> we got a good mix in the chat of uh, supporters for the both. A good variety of views in the chat, which means... I want to remind the audience to click on the Today's Debate app and cast your vote because you can vote in real time. Okay, here we go. This comes in from Day Bendu, and it's a $10 super chat. Actually, the, the previous question was for you, right, uh, Eric? So let's, let's keep an order here. So we'll go Lorraine Drosophilia first, and then Eric will get, we'll get you, you next. Uh, okay, so it's for you, Kat. Why is no grass pollen buried with Lystrosaurus? Well, again, the question has a built-in assumption. How do you know it isn't? Has, has every speck of the earth been examined to check for that? Have you been everywhere to see, make sure that isn't true? You're starting with an assumption for your question. That's like me saying, why are elephants orange? They're not orange, okay? You don't know that there's no grass pollen buried with whatever this creature is. 
So this is an assumption. And if there isn't, are there any other explanations for how things could not be buried together? Is there any explanation for why Civil War soldiers might be buried lower than World War I soldiers? Uh, yeah, might be. Could it be that clams are found at the bottom because of their body density, because they already live at the bottom? Could it be that birds are found at the top because they fly around till they run out of gas? They're the last ones to die in a flood. Is there any other explanation for why there's a little bit of sorting other than evolution? Are you willing to consider there might be a different way to explain it? Or you've already settled on that one? So you've already decided there's no grass pollen buried with whatever that is. So, okay. I don't, I don't know about it. Don't care actually on that one. Thank you, Kat. Eric, anything you wanted to add to that? Yeah, grass pollen is found in huge numbers of layers. It's found in um, Jurassic sediments. It's found in Cretaceous sediments. And then whatever the Cenozoic layers are, Quaternary, Oligocene, something, something, something. It's found in, in all of those and in absolutely none of the layers below it. So if Ken's trying to tell us that we have an order of events of things dying, how on earth is it that that land-dwelling animals of the same type of body size, like Lystrosaurus would be to probably like a rhino or something, like a small rhino or something like that. I think they were fairly large. They end up here in layers with absolutely no grass pollen whatsoever. But Kent's telling us that they were at, living at the same time as the grass pollen. And then the other animals are in completely different layers, and we find grass pollen in all of them. The only explanation that makes any sense is that these represent different eras. Okay, well, I don't know how many Lystrosaurus fossils have been found. I don't know that they've all been examined. I do know that if there's a flood, pollen tends to float on the water. So maybe it's uh, buried because of its, uh, it, it floats. There might be a different layer because it, it floats differently than the Lystrosaurus. No evidence. It's not proof. Just what if. It's not proof. It's certainly not proof that they didn't form it, live at the same time. Chicken and human footprints have never been found together in the rock. That proved they don't live at the same time. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. All right, we now we got one. Going. Okay, now we got one for you, Planet Peterson. Even if the secular model was validated over decades of research, is there an alternative explanation that credibly accounts for the consistent geologic data if the geologic column doesn't exist? Uh, well, presumably... That was Kent's um, job to try to produce that data here, but he never did. He just said, what if? He showed us pictures of things and then just said, it's possible that it happened from a worldwide event. There are so many problems that we didn't go over, like the fact that all of the limestone on Earth forming during the flood, limestone releases heat when it's formed. There are so many heat problems with this flood narrative. But it would be enough to melt the melt the oceans. And you don't have to take my word for it. Um, creationists actually say this. They've run the calculations themselves. And they understand that uh, the amount of heat that would be produced from this would, would boil the oceans. So they have to say, well, miraculously it was stopped. What evidence do we have of that? None. It's just that if we're going to say that's what happened, that's the only... Um, option we are left with and there is no evidence to support it it's just what if claims thank well, you Eric. Went, go ahead he went way off topic on that question i covered the heat problem very thoroughly a couple of weeks ago on my show on genesis baptist church youtube channel there is no heat problem you need to really study the evidence okay before you make that wild claim uh, watch what i did i covered it very thoroughly okay so the question if the secular model was validated over decades of research is there an alternative explanation sure it's, we, court lawyers do this all the time in court. There might be certain bits of evidence that say this guy's guilty. The other guy brings in evidence that says, no, he can't. No, he's not guilty. If you find 10 bits of evidence that say, John, has, he stole the cookies. He's got the crumbs on his hand. The cookie jar is missing some cookies. There's crumbs on the floor leading to John's room. That doesn't prove John did it yet. Could it be somebody set him up? Could it be he was eating cookies perfectly fine and he didn't steal those cookies at all? Any lawyer would say there's lots of other ways to look at this. So Eric's only way of looking at it is the geologic column is true. The top layers are younger. I point out we have trees standing up connecting all the layers. I'm sorry, Your Honor. It's not logical to say all this is all over the world. It's not just one location. Thousands of these are found. I think it's pretty clear evidence 
the layers all form rapidly. So it's not provable scientifically that, and I showed you the video, and you can watch the whole video yourself, experiments and stratification, moving water, water moving sideways makes multiple layers at the same time. What if each, what if the tide only made one layer? Six hours, 12 minutes later, it made another layer. Every, what if each tide made a layer? Then you would get trees standing up. They could stand up for a year during that happening. And you would claim that the layers are different ages. And anyway, I think we've covered enough, Donnie. It's been two hours. It's been a long day here. We, I agreed to go two hours. But uh, I think you went way off topic on that one. No uh, evidence, going into just what if. Heat, Could I get the problem. last word in real quick on this? Yeah, we're going to give you the last word. And I do have three super chats, though, that we have to honor. So let's do a power round for three more questions. Just real quick answers. And then that yep. way we can we can wrap it up. So, Eric, yeah, you can have the last word on this one. Yep. I'm going to share my screen real quick. And I, I won't read all this text. Here's what you can do. Watch this video later. Just pause this and read this. Actual scientists know that the heat problem is a problem. Kent didn't debunk it. If he did, he needs to publish his work in a reputable science journal and get his Nobel Prize money. A million dollars. Okay. Uh, thank you for the last word. All right. Power around, gentlemen. Let's be quick. Actually, two questions that are very similar uh, on something you guys were talking about earlier, the C14 and diamond. So let's, let's do them both real quick. George Bond, $10 super chat. Appreciate the question. If contamination is possible as a reason to reject carbon dating, then all dating done by carbon dating is wrong, but evolutionists use them when it suits them, but reject it when it points to a young earth, more of a comment than a question, but feel free to interact with it, Eric. If contamination is possible, um, fine, but we have, I, I feel like I'm taking crazy pills saying the same thing over and over again. Carbon dating has been validated by huge numbers of other lines of evidence, dendrochronology, um, and the sedimentation. And like, like we know of known artifacts from history, like Pompeii and, and other things like that. And the dating yields consistent results. Again, False positives happen at the doctor, but the idea that we're just going to throw out the way we do cancer screening and things like that because of false positives, this is weird conspiratorial thinking, and it, it you can't take it seriously. Okay, and here's a very similar one. Samir, $5 Super Chat, I appreciate it. He's asking you, diamonds are made in labs in 24 hours. Do you assume that those labs have more heat and pressure than the whole planet who needs millions of years? What, what is, what, what's the gotcha supposed to be here? We make diamonds by blasting, I think it's hydrogen gas onto like a little wafer. I don't know how that makes carbon accumulate around it. it I looked into how synthetic diamonds are made, but the idea that we can make synthetic diamonds in a process that's completely different than the process that the geologic record tells us about diamonds because they're found in like these kimberlite formations from magma that originates very deep in the earth. They're found in igneous rock deposits in areas of historically known volcanic activity. Um, so like diamonds in the earth, igneous rocks with massive crystals, intrusive igneous rocks. We've studied the time it takes to form magma crystals. It's an absurdly long amount of time. That's where we find the diamonds. That's where they formed. Today, they're up at the surface. So... I don't know what they were going for there. <clears throat> okay. Thank you, Eric. And the last one, which is for you, Kent. I know we did that one right here. Lorraine Drosophilia, $2 super chat. Ask Kent to explain Permian ecology pre-flood. Hmm, I guess I'd have to have a more specific question than that. Explain ecology. I mean, gee whiz. I think the whole world was perfect. I think God made a beautiful world. I think we have, uh, then it was destroyed by a flood 1,650 years later, and Noah built a big boat. I think we, the flood is uh, validated the, the, by all kinds of lines of evidence, including eyewitness accounts. There was a guy who built a boat and survived it. That we have eyewitness accounts of this flood, not just stories about maybe this happened millions of years ago, eyewitnesses. We have thousands of legends coming after that by people who talked to the people who survived the flood. There are every, every ancient culture has these legends. 
So I think the pre-flood world was perfect. I think it was mostly land. I think we have evidence of that from the huge amounts of coal. There are coal seams in Wyoming 300 feet thick. Eric is right. All the trees in the world today could not make all the coal we find in the world. But then he goes to the assumption that we got to take the amount of land today devoted to trees and use that as our, as our measuring stick. No, if the pre-flood world had much bigger trees, much more dense forest because it had perfect environment, perfect oxygen, perfect CO2 for the trees to breathe, and filtered sunlight, there would be very little CO2 in those trees. I mean, carbon, there'd be very little uh, carbon-14 in those trees because it was not much in the atmosphere back then. So when they died and got buried and turned to coal, if we take the carbon datum, they're going to date really old because we're using today's measuring stick of how many parts per million it is now. I forget the number now, parts per million of C14 compared to C12. So I think they're back, like I said at the beginning, he's, he's, he's based on, he starts with some uh, false assumptions. He doesn't, it doesn't, it ignores contamination as a real serious problem. He admits it can happen. Any court of law, that's enough to throw the case out, Your Honor. If we know it, he, he got to be, find be guilty beyond a shadow of a doubt. There's certainly a shadow of a doubt on all these things. And I'm going to stick with the Bible instead of instead of his fairy tale of, you know, we all came from a rock 4.6 billion years ago. So Mount St. Helens proved it can happen rapidly, rapid layers forming, rapid erosion forming real quickly. That's so, a that classic example. OK, way over two hours, Donnie. Uh, let's do it again. <laughs> We're done. We're done. We yeah. made it. We've endured to the end. So very impressive. Kent and Eric. Appreciate this. This was round two, and it was another excellent debate. Fast paced, engaging. I appreciate how comprehensive it was, just like round uh, one. And I'm glad we were able to touch on things that we weren't able to touch on in round one, as round one focused a lot on biology, genetics. This one focused a lot on paleontology, mm -hmm. dating methods, and also uh, geology. So let's get some uh, real quick final words, final thoughts. Eric. Thanks so much for doing this. And let's hand it to you. Quick final words. Um, I uh, just for like the millionth time, um, even in that the that very last super chat that Kent was answering, it was just no evidence, just what if. What if 5,000 years ago things were different? What if there was more land 5,000 years ago? But no evidence for any of that. Um, and then just comment about the debate. We didn't come anywhere close to covering all the topics I wanted to talk about and that's okay but yeah it went really well Donnie you've been a really good host and you know you're letting me share the material too and so I just uh thank you very much for doing that and Kent you've been like a really good interlocutor for the most part we don't talk over each other there's no screaming match it's mostly civil so as much as we disagree um it's been good so thanks for that Thank you.